Welcome to Community Watch. Greg, Doc, how are you? Happy, man. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> because we have been interviewing Rome City Commissioner candidates. All of them. All 372 of them. And we're closing in on the, the end of that series. Yes. So that's why you're happy. Yes. <laughs> but you're happy because you get into this. I do. Yeah. I mean, it, it's beneficial. So we have a candidate uh, waiting right now, Bonnie mm -hmm. Askew, uh, and you are running for Ward 3. Ward 3. Ward 3. Well, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Mr. Askew, what is your primary motivation for running for Rome City Commission? My primary m motivation is I want to make Rome better. I want to keep Rome in the forefront. Um, I think that we need to um, continue with economic development. We need to work, focus on public safety. We need to make sure that uh, all of our citizens are safe and have a good quality of life in Rome and Floyd County. What is one goal you want to achieve as city commissioner? One, the one thing that I want to do as a city commissioner is to listen to the people. I want them to have a voice on the, count, on the commission um, for whatever issue comes up. I want to be there to listen to them. What I'd like to see happen is I'd like for us to uh, focus on economic development so that we can continue to, uh, to grow Rome. Um, I would like to, um, I mean, and economic development also means uh, proper training, uh, bringing in the um, the right um, industries for our for our city, so that we can use and use and utilize the talent that we have here. Our our Latino neighborhood neighbors are a growing part of our city's population, but hold few positions of leadership in Rome. How do you plan to facilitate that change? Well. Um, I think that's, well, my daughter's already involved in, in that. She's a member of, um, in, in a leadership position with Romanos Unidos, which is the, uh, the voice in the, uh, the Latino community here. I work with them, um, and I want to make sure that uh, as opportunities come up, that we hire fairly and, and equally. Um, that's any minority, every minority, um, I want us to focus on uh, education um, and even especially teaching English as a second language because in order for them to hold leadership positions, they have to be able to communicate with, the, um, with, with, the, with their constituents and with, with the leadership in Rome right now. All right. Do you support the urban camping ordinance that the police have proposed? How do you envision the city's role in finding solutions to issues of poverty? I don't have a problem with the ordinance itself, but what I do have a problem with is the fact that uh, I think that we're handcuffing the police officers. By that I mean what we're doing is we're giving them the, uh, the tools to, in the way of the ordinance, but we're not giving them the tools they need to, to properly enforce the ordinance. In other words, um, they need to be able to tell the, the um, urban campers if they can't stay here where they can go, what services are available for them, where those services are. And if they don't do that, then eventually the, those people will push back. When they push back, then you really have a problem. So I think that we need to, we need to properly prepare the police officers for um, enforcing that ordinance. Do you believe downtown business has been hurt because of the parking ordinance? How would you describe the problem with parking and what is your solution? I've thought about this some myself because finding a parking space in downtown Rome is, is a problem sometimes. Um, our problem is not nearly as bad as the one that I encountered in Philadelphia. I went up for a family reunion. We went to park and they told us, oh, you can't park. 
in order to to park, you had to use a valet service. So I would get out of my car, some hand somebody my keys, and they would take it to a parking deck somewhere, and they would park my car until I got ready to go, and then they would come back. Now it cost an arm and a leg, but that was the only way that you could park in in that area. I think that what we need to look at is the type of businesses that we have in in Rome and Floyd County. I mean, in, in downtown Rome, because those the businesses that we do have down there lend themselves to people staying for more than an hour or two hours. Um, if I go into a restaurant to eat, I don't want to be rushed because of the fact that I got to go out and move my car. Um, I think that we need to look at the parking decks. That also brings us back to the homeless issue because we also have homeless people who are camping in the parking decks and people not wanting to park there. So all of this comes back, comes together. We need to um, actually make sure that um, the people who are working downtown are not parking downtown and causing more of a problem. I mean, that doesn't mean that they can't park. It's just that they have to abide by the same rules as everybody else. Um, Off-broad parking would be great uh, if we can find a way to do that uh, and make it such that um, um, everybody has a, way, a place to park. <coughs> All right. Now that the city and county have decided to take a larger role in economic development and recruitment of industries, what changes are you pr proposing regarding recruitment strategies? How will you measure success of the new model? I don't think we need to change a whole lot. The uh, chamber was doing a, um, a decent job of bringing in industry. We have to increase our efforts. Um, that means that if we're going to um, bring in companies like um, Pirelli and um, some of the other companies that are here, then we have to be prepared to to um, work with them and negotiate with them and provide them what they need. The city and county taking a bigger, a larger role in that means that we will be prepared because we'll know what they require and we'll know what they. Um, what they need and what kind of um, employees they need, what kind of training those employees need, and therefore we can we can work to do that through that with the uh, school systems and Georgia Northwestern, jo uh, Georgia Highlands, and and even Shorter and Berry. And I think that we need to uh, utilize those tools as much as we do, as much as we can, so that we can make sure that everybody has an opportunity to get it to to find a decent and well-paying job. Based on the recent requirements that the city schools provide their own transportation, what do you see as the next chapter for Rome Transit? Is it finally the right time to add Georgia Highlands to the bus route? I think that would be a great idea. Um, I, I, I know that in the um, back in the 80s, part of the thing that kept Rome Transit alive was the fact that they provided service for the schools. Um, and cutting those buses out will will cause a bigger a big problem for us because the feds have cut back on money for transportation. Um, adding Georgia Highlands would be a great idea. Um, I think we need to add some consistent bus routes um, and maybe add some of the um, the uh, new industries uh, stops at new industries so that people who don't have cars can now get to work and be there at a certain time. All right. African-American and Latino residents of Rome total over 40% of the population. What can the city of Rome do to increase the involvement of these residents in area businesses, both as owners and as patrons? One of the things that, that, that um, the city can do is communicate better with um, the Latino and uh, African American communities. Um, reaching out and involving them in the, um, the plans that the city has would be a great idea because then we would know where businesses need to be and, and what businesses need to be there. Um, to continue to um, 
to, to build on the, in those neighborhoods without involving um, young Latino and black entrepreneurs um, kills a spirit. And it also makes them feel like they're not really wanted. So they would be more likely to leave and go somewhere else and probably be a success because they've got that drive. But we need to make sure that we're communicating with them, providing them opportunities to, for funding, um, and um, helping them to, to learn how to, to get that funding. If elected, how would you plan to communicate with your constituents, especially to discuss upcoming controversial issues with them? I really plan to do what I've been doing recently and, and all along, making myself available to, to listen to them, to talk to them, to tell them what's going on. Um, I usually eat out um, or go to a breakfast meeting on maybe Tuesday, Wednesday um, in different areas of Rome. I, continue, I want to continue to do that. I want to make sure that um, my, uh, they have a way of contacting me so that if there are questions that they can call me and, and, and contact me. I'm reminded of when I was on the commission in 1982, I got a call from a lady who had a problem with, with um, at that time, Floyd Junior College. And she called me, and I'm a city commissioner, and George, uh, Floyd College was not in my, uh, in my area, but I sat and listened to her. And she didn't call at a five o'clock in the afternoon. She called at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> But, and my wife was kind of upset because it was one o'clock in the morning and, and I had just gotten in from work, but I told her, I said, listen, it's my job to listen. So that's what I want to do. I want to be a voice for the people. I want to listen to them. I want to make sure that they know um, I'll keep my web page up. And if there are things coming up they should, that they should know about, they can go and check that as well. Do you believe the city of Rome is doing enough to protect its historic buildings and areas on the National Register and within designated historic districts of the city? I think that, um, uh, I think they're doing as much as they possibly can right now because I think there's a problem with the perception of people that, if, that in, in order for it to be a historic building, it has to be a certain age or it has to be I have a specific history behind it, and that's not always the case. I think that what we need, um, that what we need to, to do is help them to understand that an, a whole area can be declared historic, and that can be a problem for people who live in, in those historic houses, especially when you're, when you're looking at the funding needed to keep that house the way it is, and that's part of the uh, requirements that, that are there. I think we need to, um, to work with them and not just tell them that it's there. Designating them as historic places is, is okay, but it has, should be done with the consent of the, owners, uh, the property owners. Okay. Well, I think we're about out of time. We are. Uh, we appreciate so much your coming to talk with us. It's my pleasure. Uh, we are going to take a break and when we come back, we'll have a little more discussion. So stay with us. Your life is filled with opportunities to show the world you can take charge. It's waking up each day with a mission. It's working each day toward a goal. It's choosing to rise. It's charging forward with a purpose. It's changing the course of your life and taking charge of your future. If you're ready to be a Take Charger, enroll at Georgia Highlands College today. Welcome back to Community Watch. Greg. No. Um, I, I need to say first that we just interviewed Bonnie Askew. I didn't get to say his name again at the end. And he is running for Ward 3. So we just interviewed nine. He was. Number nine. Yes. Now, now folks, you may 
you may view them in a different order, so yeah. it may not seem that way to you, but in the order that we interviewed them, uh, Mr. Askew was the ninth of nine mm -hmm. candidates. So we wanted to, and it was exhausting, wasn't it? It's exhausting to do that many shows, but it is very informative. It was useful. Yeah. I mean, it was useful. Because for me, um, for us, we're fortunate to be able to sit here and really see facial expressions, body language. Uh, I think the questions do lend themselves to um, kind of separate people on different issues, kind of where people are. You know, some people are clearly very confident and strong on certain issues. Mm -hmm. Some people are not so much, which is understandable. But I do, th I'm glad that we do this because I do think it clearly shows where different candidates are mm -hmm. uh, with regards to some of the things that affect Rome. We need to talk a little bit about the wards and voting and how voting works with the commissioner uh, positions because it's it can be confusing. Yes. So the election that's coming up and the uh, the date of the election is November fifth. But early voting starts, I believe, October 15th. And that is, and I, I can thank the League of Women Voters for that information because I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find it on the Rome Floyd pages. What? I couldn't. Mm. I looked, well, I, I, my, my search ability might be the flaw Somewhat here. questionable. It might be questionable. <laughs> but I, I finally turned to the one place I knew I could get the information, and it was the League of Women Voters. So um, October 15th, I believe, is when early voting begins, but election day is November 5th. And folks uh, who have not registered to vote can still do it, uh, I think, up through like the first week of October. But anyway, there are six seats on the commission that are up for election uh, this fall and the way it works is and I you know we had uh, Commissioner um, Davis Wendy Davis come on the show once I think you were out of town we spent the entire show with her explaining the the wards and the uh, so I mean, it, it took an entire show I mean we did, it, it was no padding, you know, we took the entire, entire show. show. Aside. So it, it's a complicated thing, but um, there are three wards. Uh, two of them come up for election this time. Ward two is not up for election this time, so that's why you're not hearing about Ward two this fall. But Ward one has three seats, and Ward three has three seats. So there are one, two, three, four, five candidates for Ward 1, and uh, one, two, three, four candidates for Ward 3. But it really doesn't matter to Ward. Once you right? vote, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It matters how the candidates qualify. Mm -hmm. So they have to live in a certain area to qualify for Ward 1. They have to live in a certain area to qualify for Ward Three, but they're elected citywide. Right. So, and I, I'm a Ward Two person. So that doesn't matter. I mean, I can vote for Ward One and Three, but in order to qualify for those positions, you have to live in the in wards. Ward. So, you can vote. Residents of Rome can vote for three in Ward 1 and three in Ward 3. And that's the maximum you can vote for. If you don't like three or you don't have strong feelings for three, you can vote for two. If there's one candidate that you really, really, really support and the others you don't care so much about, you can vote for one. So basically what you're saying is that even though you can vote for six people, you, you, you you're can. not required to. You're you not can, required. You can vote for the number you really feel strongly about if you want. Right. 
Right. But you can't vote for more than six. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you followed that or not. But I, I did. But uh, this, I always find that interesting that you are representing Ward 1, mm -hmm. but really anybody, you can be elected primary. You can be, you can represent Ward 1 and really win the election by the representation from 2 and 3. Right. And not even win your own ward. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how often that has happened. That'd be but, interesting to yeah. study. But yes, I, I suppose it is possible that you would be elected by people who are not even in your, in your ward. Yeah. But, but 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 I am glad we did the show. You know, sometimes it's you know can be something. But a lot of times, you know, I think when we talk to candidates candidates in person, you know, I, it's, I think that's easy sometimes. Mm -hmm. One to one, I think it's more more comfortable for the people running. Yeah. But I think for them to come on and not know the questions we have, you know, ahead of time, really kind of puts them in positions. Right. And I do think it. And I do think it you know, uh, requires them to have done some some degree of study to, yeah. to know things that have gone on, not just in the commission, not just the incumbents, but also the people running, but also for the incumbents. I think you have to kind of know what's going on and be on top of things, and I do think that's a, a value added because I know after watching the show, you know, you clearly some people I feel are, are, have done more work than others on certain issues. Yeah, I don't know if folks watching realize that the questions that we put together, um, the candidates, none of the candidates mm -hmm. have seen them in advance. And the way we tape the shows, uh, no candidate is allowed to hear uh, another candidate's answers before it's their turn. So the question should be a surprise, although some of them shouldn't. They shouldn't be because they're, for the most part, they're issues that have been ongoing and uh, any incumbent certainly and any new candidate uh, who's serious about it should have done the work and studied the issues of, of the city to be able to respond to these questions. I, I don't, I mean, I, there might have been one or two uh, surprises, but for the most part, I'm thinking these are issues that have that are not new or yeah. yeah. So now, being that we've gone through the questions, we've interviewed everybody. There are some. I mean, there clearly are some questions that there are no easy answers to, mm -hmm. like the whole the the homeless issue. Right. And I I wonder in listening to the different nine responses. How many people in Rome even acknowledge or recognize that there's a homeless issue in Rome? Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you driving through Rome, it's not readily visible. So I guess it may, I don't know if it's in pockets, I'm, I'm not sure, but clearly based on what most people, based on what was said by most candidates that I, this is something the police was asking for, yeah. this urban ordinance. I just wonder how many people even recognize there is a homeless population in Rome? It's certainly not as evident as as you see in larger cities. And you travel a lot, so I know you see mm -hmm. uh, an issue with homeless. I was explaining that just the other day to a young man when we was driving. Why, why the, why, uh, he said people had their stuff under a bridge, like, you know, he was like, why do they have all their stuff right there? He didn't realize that's where right. they live, you know. Uh -huh. so he was like, really? Oh. So yeah, I don't see it here, but but clearly it exists. Yeah. But I think it's. Uh, I mean, it's an issue that I mean, it's good that the the yeah. different factions in the city are trying to address it uh, where it is now. Um, but it, you're right. It's a, it's one of those issues that's very. Yeah. It's not. There's not a uh, an easy answer. Easy to answer. It. And, and, that, and that is one of the things that uh, when I think about Rome, I do think Rome is a great community to live in. Uh, I do think Rome is taking steps to move forward. But at the same time, I have to be honest, we're not there. I don't think. I think nobody will argue that downtown Rome is a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. 
but I don't think anyone would argue with me that downtown Rome is very, um, lacks diversity on most nights. And, I, and, I, and I'm hoping as we move forward that it's something um, that, we will, that people will address. Because I do think there's things that we can do as a community to address that. Why are uh, African Americans, Latinos, and Asians, anybody else, why are there not a fair share down there on any given night? And I don't mean the town green or having a concert, but from my perspective, on any given night, there's not a lot of diversity downtown Rome. And I think at some point we have to, we have to ask why, why is that? So I am glad it is one of the questions, it's kind of what we, we brought up, mm -hmm. but it would be interesting to see how we address some of these issues because I do think we still have quite a ways to go in some areas. Yeah. But that's me and you know I tend to be a little. No, um, you know it's something I notice um, and I notice more diversity out uh, just passing through on sidewalks and then in the evening mm -hmm. in Rome, but much less diversity actually inside the businesses in, in terms of patronage. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know. Uh, but that's not new either. It's not new, but it's something, I mean, I don't have an easy yeah. answer to why that is. I, yeah. Because we've had this discussion we, years over the years, yeah. you know. Um, but hey, you know, I do think we're moving in the right direction, so maybe that's we'll get to that, yeah. <laughs> get to that question. It might be interesting to do a, a show, series about that because just a show on that. You remember we talked about the the series on the Sporkful. It's been a yes. a couple of years Sporkful, ago. Yeah, about uh, diversity in restaurants yeah. and and what uh, encourages people to you know go to one restaurant and not yeah. another. Yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. I still think that's very interesting because yeah. you get some people, some restaurants are just packed. Yeah. And they're not necessarily good, but they have a loyal following. And so that is kind of interesting. But the election, um, November 5th, and you know, I, hope, I hope folks will vote because, oh, yes. you know, we talked about this too. The city commission is one of those local uh, offices that if you feel like your vote is meaningless when you vote, it, this is one of those occasions where it's not meaningless, yes. where you have a say in how your community is run. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's, in fact, it's, it's somewhat mind-boggling how we get so excited about a national presidential election when the city commission affects your life daily. Much more. Daily. Much more in, in an obvious way. And, and quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> quick. Oh, we're, we're running on time. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed it. Always, brother. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being with us. I hope you can uh, see all of the shows we have done with the candidates for city commission and make sure you vote. Thank you for being with us on Community Watch. We'll see you next time.